Hi, my name's Neil. Welcome to Retro for You. On today's episode, I'm going to be doing a guide on how to update the firmware on the Amiga 600 Accelerator, the Furia. Now, there is a video out there by Mr. Chris Edwards. Now, big thumbs up to Chris Edwards for doing that video. If it wasn't for him attempting this in the first place and jumping through loops with all the software, etc., I wouldn't have been in the position I was to create this video now. All the software etc is in the link down below. I've uploaded it to my Google Drive. Now I was asked to do this when I was visiting the Yorkshire Amiga group. Now if you haven't visited the Yorkshire Amiga group then please take a look at the link down below and check them out. Now they have meetings regularly about once a month. They're usually around the Yorkshire area but to be honest, it's worth traveling. Sometimes I travel over two and a half hours. I myself go quite a few of them. Also, 8-Bit Retro Refix, he turns up to a lot as well because he is Yorkshire-based. Now, the great fun, I do suggest you book in advance and book a table if you want to take a machine. But it's not only just Amigas, you can take any machine. There's usually Commodore 64s. There's a, I've taken an Atari, a BBC. Just anything retro related if you want to go along and meet like-minded people then i highly suggest it so on that note without further ado let's crack on with this guide this is the first thing we need to do before we do the three steps firmware can be found by visiting loferec.pl the link will be down in the description as well. First you do is go to Amiga, if you click here, and then you can select the Furia Amiga 600. There's active cooling, which is the one with the fan, I guess, and there's passive, which we need here. So we go click on this. We then go to files. So, and then the latest firmware is here, which is 14.3. Now there is two versions, 2K and 4K. There is a text file there, but basically the 2K and 4K is marked on a sticker on your card. It actually says on it, mine says 4K. If one would probably just say 2K, etc. So all you do is you download that file. So now we've got that file, let's crack on. Okay, so we're just about ready to install the software. Now, the video I watched online it took him hours and hours and hours to do this and it took me a few hours to be honest that was mainly because of the instructions now I did receive this DVD here I know I've not seen a DVD in ages but I managed to find a CD-ROM I connected it up and I copied it onto a pen drive and then onto a desktop and I managed to take it down to just three steps now which is absolutely brilliant. So I put all this software on a drive if you want. So if you need it, you can just download the whole lot in the three steps and hopefully follow these instructions and you should be good to go. So I'll explain to you why I had trouble. Now I'll just play a quick snippet of the installation video that comes with it. You'll see why. 此教程包含两种类型的下载器驱动。Unfortunately, I'm not fluent in Chinese, so that's why I struggled a bit with installation. But in the end, we got there and we managed to change a few things like it said in the video. I did watch them. I sort of got the gist of it by looking what they were clicking etc because I knew where administrator was etc so I managed to work it out okay so the first thing you do is the software now for some reason I had to copy this folder out onto my desktop I'll show you why I've got this one here okay this is Xilinx 14.7 I run the setup and you can see there's nothing and I don't know why just very strange There's some very strange things with this software so I was running this was thinking it's not working what is wrong with this so I just happened to copy it out of that folder I don't know whether it's a Chinese language causing issues or something 
and here it is here. So if we open this one, exactly the same folder, and click run as administrator, it runs straight away. So don't ask me why that is. So what we're going to do now is just press next. Accept, accept, next again. I accept, next again. And it's going to put it into the lab tools, standalone, which is what we need. Now, these we don't need. We can just unclick these. We don't need these. You can use a multiple CPU cores. Just make sure you unclick these because you don't need them. And it will ask you to go for a license key, which is a load of hassle. You have to go online to AMD. You have to fill out your life story. They want to know your shoe size. They want to know your height. They want to know your weight. They want to know what you've eaten for breakfast. It's just crazy stuff they want to know. So just press next on that. Obviously, the C drive and it's Xilinx, okay? So we'll just press next and install, and we'll wait for that to install. So enjoy the music. That's that main part of the software installed. But what we need to do next is see this ISE crash here? This is basically a fix for Windows 10, Windows 11. It doesn't actually work until you do this. So what you'll do is press copy here and then go to the file, which was this one here. Don't get confused with that one. That must have been one I installed earlier. So it's this one here. I've already copied it into there, but you get my gist. You copy that into there, place the file in the destination just do it and now all we got to do is winrar extract here that was yes to all I'm just wiping them so now all you need to do see this ISE crash you need to right click run as administrator again and it will copy some files over for you to fix the issue the issue is with the uh, DLLs apparently but this actually fixes it so now that is installed we should be able to go to here all apps the X and this is the only software you need under this Xilinx design tools and you need this one here impact 64 bit obviously because I've got the 64 bit OS and hopefully it should run and load which it has so we can now close that that's good So the first thing you need to do is you need to get your Zilinix, is it? I don't know how you pronounce it, Zilinix. Xlinx, they are, Xilinx, I've got it. So you get your Xilinx and you plug in your lead. Okay, now in Device Manager, let me just open it up for you, you should see something here called Xilinx. So now we need to go to step two, which is the drivers. Now the instructions told me, first I've got to go into here, I have to run this here as administration again. So I run this as administrator, and it does this. Don't ask me what that says, but it's done something. Okay. Now the next thing it says is to go here and right click this and run as administrator. Again, it says to disconnect you do that and it doesn't do anything it doesn't work so the way around this I found was simple all you got to do is open device manager go to here obviously right click and click update driver browse my computer for drivers and basically point it to that folder there which is drivers, the DLC and the 64-bit driver. Obviously the 32-bit driver if you're running Windows 32. And then OK and then next it. And then it will install the drivers. So now you'll see you've got the Xilinx USB cable which is absolutely brilliant. And now hopefully when we load this in, there is it again. So we'll go back to you know what, I can't get on with Windows 11. All apps. 
and we'll go down to here. Again, Xilinx Design Tools. Again, Impact 64. And yes. Okay. Should say, there you go. So that's okay. It's found the cable, but obviously it's not connected to anything. So the boundary scan won't show anything. So we'll do that later when we flash it, you'll see. So that is all the software you got to do. So next part of the video, I'm going to show you how to connect the lead to the accelerator card. Make sure it's connected correctly. I'll put some pictures up as well on the screen so you can see it connected. So you do get this right and this makes it so much easier for you. So without further ado, let's crack on with connecting the programmer. We're about ready to connect this up. Now this is the programmer, like I said before, the Xilinx, okay? Now this is the Chinese copy. The original one will cost over 300 quid. This one's about 40 pounds, 30 pounds. And with that, you get this little board, which you need here. Multitude of connections. You also get quite a few leads, different connections again. So we've got some ribbons, some colored ribbons, etc. Now the one you need is this one here. This is the one that separates at the end and you need every single wire by the gray one. So you know you've done it right and connected up right. If you've got the gray one not connected. Now the first thing to do is to just connect this up to here. Now you got the red wire here and that goes to the VCC which points towards this connector here. And the free volt which is a red just pops on like so. Now there is a blanking pin there but unfortunately there's a blanking pin there. You can actually see there now you can actually check the last one is TMS as well. See there TMS. So that's it for this side. Now all we've got to do is connect it inside the Amiga. First is the red DC. Next is the black, the ground. After that it's yellow. It's matte DCK. Then the purple. Is marked TD0. After the purple is the white, which is TD1. And after that, finally, it's the green, which is work marked TMS. It should have the grey one left over, it says in it. So that's it, it's connected up to the board. Quite simple, really, isn't it? So the final thing we need to do is connect this to the programmer. Now that is easy. There's a key on the top, you can see there in the middle, and there's a key here. Now it's key to just basically plug in like so. And that's it. So let's load the program and see if we can get this board flashed up. Okay, so at the stage where we're about ready to program this thing. Now I've got the Furia. Furia. I've got the Furia set up inside here so it's actually installed into the A600 the leads are connected how I told you before now this is plugged into the USB notice this red light here when you apply power to the Amiga it should turn green which it does now that's a good sign so what we need to do next is we need to open the software okay so first thing to do is to run impact 64 that should open up do you want the system to automatically create and save a project for you? Yes, we do. So make sure that you select this option here. Automatically connect to a cable, which you want to connect to this device here. And then identify boundary scan chain. So anything on that chain, any chips on that chain to program. So all you do is press OK. And hopefully it should identify succeed, which is good. And the chip should come up here with the one chip on there, which is the XC95144XL. So what we need to do next is to click yes on this to auto assign configuration files. And we need to browse to my computer, to the C drive, to here, and to the one we downloaded, which was the 4K JED file, which is here. So we now select that file there. 
Now, make sure that you select the first three boxes of these. You've got to verify you've got the design specific erase before programming, which will erase it, and then obviously the read protect. Click the apply button, then click the OK button. Next, you double click the program here, and it should pop up without executing command. It's actually programming it, and as long as you get this program succeeded, and you can see there, Fioria EC020Z, it all looks good. That should be that. So what we're going to do next is we're going to update the uh, kickstart, which it couldn't run before, and just see if the machine runs. We've got the Fioria installed and flashed, because we just flashed it. I've installed and flashed the 3.22 ROM, which wouldn't run before. Without this, it just wouldn't start before. So it's also got a memory upgrade as well. So what we're going to do next is we're just going to put this down and connect this wire up and we're just going to plug it in, run sysinfo, see if it's all working. Well, hopefully it'll boot to sysinfo. Who knows? So let's just crack on with that now and get it done. We're now set up with sysinfo. We're going to boot sysinfo. Hopefully it should boot. See what happens looking good yeah we'll flick this to full screen so you can see so we transitions across we're on full screen now <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're just going to move the mouse and we're going to do a speed test to check that the accelerator is actually working so we'll just click speed and it should compute the speed it's like it's working So there you go, you can see there's a standard A600 and we are 12 and a half times faster than that. So that proves it's working and it seems to be pretty stable. We can go to memory, so we've got 8 mega fast, 1.5 mega slow RAM and 1 mega chip RAM. Also what else can we do here, we've done the speed, we can go to boards, then we've got a Zoro 2 which I guess is what is emulating. So, all looks good. Looks like that was success in the flash. So, if you need to flash one of these to run the latest kickstart, follow my guide and I hope it helps. So, that's about it for now. I'm not going to do any more. I will see you in the outro. So, we made it to the end of another episode. Now, if this video helped you, please let me know down below in the comments. The next couple of videos are going to be PCB Way projects. I need to get them done as I need to look after my main support of the channel, who of course is PCBWay. So there's going to be some interesting retro products on the way to be built. I've got a Mac video coming along. Might have some more Acorn stuff coming along. I do want to get back to the BBC video, which was the 68008. We need to try to install that into a machine and try to see if it's working. Scope out the signals, etc. It's good for me to have a break from that project. I've had two weeks on it now. I managed to get somewhere. The capacitors still haven't arrived, so I can't finish that. So look out for that, it is coming back. Just before I go, check out the link down below and you'll find a link to some other YouTubers in my YouTube buddies. We've got the likes of Captain Commodore, 8-Bit Retro Refix, Joseph, make sure you check out their channels down below. If you're new here, then please hit the like button. It always helps my videos. And also drop a comment down below, even if it's hello. And if you haven't done already, please hit the subscribe button. That's the biggest help you can give me. So that's it for now. I shall see you next time on Retro For You. See you soon, guys. Bye.